fear flooded him. He looked back at the whisperers as if he wanted to say something to them, but thought better of it. He dashed back across the road, hurried up to his office, snapped at his secretary not to disturb him, seized his telephone, and had almost finished dialing his home number when he changed his mind. He put the receiver back down and stroked his moustache, thinking, "No, he was being stupid. Porter wasn't such an unusual name. He was sure there were lots of people called Porter who had a son called Harry." Come to think of it, he wasn't even sure his nephew was called Harry. He'd never even seen the boy. It might have been Harvey or Harold. There was no point in worrying Mrs. Darcy. She always got too upset at any mention of her sister. He didn't blame her if he'd had a sister like that. But all the same, those people in cloaks. He found it a lot harder to concentrate on drills that afternoon. And when he left the building at five o'clock, he was still he was he was still so worried that he walked straight into someone just outside the door. Sorry, he grunted as the tiny old man stumbled and almost fell. It was a few seconds before Mister Dawsley realized that the man was wearing a violet cloak. He didn't seem at all upset at being almost knocked to the ground. On the contrary, his face slipped into a wide smile, and he said in a squeaky voice that made passers passers by stare. Don't be worried, my dear sir. For anything, for nothing could upset me today. Rejoice, for you know who had gone and lost. Even muggles like yourself should be celebrating this happy, happy day. And the old man hugged Mister Darcy around the beetle and walked off. Mister Darcy stood. Stood rooted to the spot. He had been hugged by a complete stranger. He also thought he had been called a muggle. Whatever that was, he was rattled. He hurried to his car and set off for home, hoping he was imagining things which he had never hoped before, because he didn't approve of imagination. As he poured into the driveway of number four, the first thing he saw, and it didn't improve his mood, was a puppy cat he spotted that morning. It was now sitting on his garden wall. He was sure it was the same one. It had the same markings around its eyes. Shoo! Said Mister Darcy loudly. The cat didn't move. It just gave him a stern look. What's this normal cat behavior? Mister Darcy wondered, trying to pull himself together. He let himself into the house. He was still determined not to mention any anything to his wife. Mister Darcy had 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 a nice normal day. She told him over that dinner all about Mrs. Nextdoor's problems with her daughter and how Dolly had learned a new word. Shut. Mrs. Dosley tried to act normally. When Dudley had been put to bed, he went into the living room in time to catch the last report on the evening news. And finally, bird watch, bird watchers everywhere have reported that the nation's owls have been behaving very unusual, unusually today. Although owls normally hunt at night and are hardly Ever seen in daylight? There have been hundreds of light、uh, sightings of these birds flying every direction since sunrise. Experts are unab- unable to explain why the owls have suddenly changed their sleeping pattern. The newsreader allowed himself a grin. Most mysterious. And now, over to Jim. McGuffin with the weather.
going to be any more shells of owls in our team? Well, Tad said the weatherman, "I don't know about that, but it's not only the owls that have been acting oddly today. Viewers have been phoning in to tell me." Viewers as far as far apart as Kent, Yoshiye, and Dongdi have been phoning in to tell me that instead of the rain I promised yesterday, they've had a downpour of shooting stars. Perhaps people have been celebrating bonfire night early. It's not until next week, folks, but I can promise a what. Not denied. Mr. Dorsley sat frozen in his armchair, shooting stars all over Britain. Owls flying by daylight, mysterious people in clothes all over the place, and a whisper, a whisper about the mortis. Mr. Dorsley came into the living room carrying two cups of tea. It was no good. He had to say something to her. He cleared his throat nervously. Uh, Petunia dear, you haven't heard from your sister lately, have you? As he had expected, Mrs. Darcy looked shocked and angry. Although they normally pretend that she didn't have a sister. No, she said sharply. What? Funny stuff on the news. Mr. Dorsley mumbled, "Owls, shooting stars, and there were a lot of funny-looking people in town today." So, said Mrs. Dorsley, "Well, I just thought maybe there was something to do with, you know, her lot." Mrs. Dorsley sipped her tea through pursed lips. Miss Dorsley wondered whether he dared tell her he'd heard the name Porter. He decided he didn't dare. Instead, he said, as casually as he could, "This son, he'd be about Dudley's age now, wouldn't he?" "I suppose so," said Missus Dorsley stiffly. "What's his name again? Howard, isn't it?" "Harry, that's a common name, if you ask me." Oh yes," said Mister Dorsley, his heart sinking horribly. "Yes, I quite agree." He didn't say another word on the subject as they went upstairs to bed. While Missus Dorsley was in the bathroom, Mister Dorsley crept to the bedroom window and peered down into the front garden. The cat was still there. It was staring down private、uh, private drive as though it was waiting for something. Was he imagining things? Could all this have have anything to do with the porters? If it did, if it got out that they were related to a pair of, well, he didn't think he could bear it. The Dosleys got into bed. Mister Dosley fell asleep quickly, but Miss Mister Dosley lay awake, turning it all over in his mind. His last comforting thought before he fell asleep was that even if the Potters were involved, there was no reason for them to come near him. And Mister Dosley, the Potters, and and Missus Dosley. The porters knew very well what he and Petunia thought about them and their kind. He couldn't see how he and Petunia could get mixed up in anything that might be going on. He yawned and turned off. It couldn't affect them. How very wrong he was. Mister Dorsley might have been drifting into an uneasy sleep. But the cat on the wall outside was showing no sign of sleepiness. It was sitting as still as a statue, its eyes fixed unblinkingly on the far corner of Private Drive. Private Drive. It didn't so much as quiver, quiver when a car door slammed in the next street, nor when two owls swooped overhead. In fact, 
It was nearly midnight before the cat moved at all. A man appeared on the corner the cat had been watching. Appeared so suddenly and silently, you'd have thought he just popped out of the ground. The cat's tail twitched and its eyes narrowed. Nothing like this man had ever been seen in private life. He was tall, thin, and very old. Judging by the style of his hair.